everyone to the third week of the Latinx Super Friends Playwriting Zoom with Cristina Quintana, otherwise known as CQ. Welcome. Thank you so much. And and uh, let us, uh, I'm Tlalo Crivas, I'm the producer, curator, and on the moderator is Thea Rogers and you're, uh, Thea, you're Thea, Thea, right? You're in yeah. LA. Yes, that's right. Okay. And I'm in Pittsburgh. I go by he, him, his. And uh, I just want to welcome you all to the third week. Um, before we get started with CQ, I just wanted to say thank you again for those of you who have can, been coming week after week. And I'd like to welcome those who are coming for the first time. Um, I want to just send a shout out to uh, everyone on the front lines of the, the COVID crises. And if you have family or members of your family who work in any of the essential industries, um, shout out to them. Uh, I pray for their health and, and their security. And I just wanted to send out love and light to all of you and to all those affected by, by this pandemic. Uh, that being said, I, I, you know, I started this with the idea that we could get together and connect and share with each other things that can inspire us to continue to do our work uh, during and beyond, uh, you know, hopefully after this crisis is over. But for now, I'm, I'm really, really thrilled to have the queue here and I'm gonna hand it off to you and welcome. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, thank you to Talok and to Thea and to everyone who's here. I'm just like, it's so incredible to see just folks that I know, folks that I don't know from around the United States and the world who are all gathered here today. Um, I know that uh, it's been a really hard last month and a half for a lot of us. And I just wanna second what Talak just said and just really add, you know, for all who've lost anyone and just really thinking about sort of the amazing figures in our communities that we've lost. Um, I feel like I've been thinking a lot, especially about the women of color who we've lost during this time. So um, I really, this, the purpose of, of, for me, you know, I was, I was so humbled to be asked to do this whole thing. For me, I've just really been thinking about so much of like, you know, uh, as a writer, we have these ideas of, you know, productivity and a productivity mindset. And it's such a like, you know, capitalistic, you know, American kind of idea. And I think what I've been really also centering on is how healing and powerful writing can be and art making can be and how we can kind of focus on that. Um, so today I'm going to share my screen to start. Um, and I'm just gonna share this. And I, this actually, this whole document is gonna be available to everyone. It's actually gonna be in the chat. Um, and Thea is going to provide it for everyone as well. So you can have this material. And I just really want to start out today um, by saying that, you know, so first of all, this idea of medicinal, medicinal playwriting, I've kind of invented it, right? Not that these types of things don't exist. But the idea is really, as I'm saying, for this process to be about healing. It's about, it's your space. And whether you write, you know, one page or one word today, that's fine. And, and I really think today it's about embracing where you are right now in this moment. Um, so <clears throat> the first thing we're going to actually do today is we're going to talk about the inner critic. So I really, um, here's a fun drawing, actually the first one I really enjoyed, and this is actually a bell hooks um, quote that I thought was really wonderful. When we drop fear, we can draw nearer to people, we can draw nearer to the earth, we can draw nearer to all the heavenly creatures that surround us. Um, so Bell Hooks is with us today. Uh, but let's start out talking about an inner critic. Um, and I really want to ask the class. I know this is a kind of harder format to sort of do that, but Thea is going to help us out. So I know what it says here as per Wikipedia, but I would really love just anyone in the space who wants to raise their hand and tell us to them what is an inner critic. Do we have anybody who's who's down for that? Don't be scared. I don't see any hands yet, but do we have? I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you. Oh, great. I see Sean's hand is Yay. up. So I'm gonna go ahead and unmute Sean. Yes. Sean, you should be unmuted. Thank you. Hey, Sean.
Do we have Sean? Sean, do we have I had to connect. Yeah, I had to connect my head. So I forgot. Oh, about that's that. okay. Can Sorry. you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the inner critic is, um, is usually a bad thing, but I also can, I also think can sometimes be a positive thing. That's great. Because, um, yeah, I think it, it's, it's both inspiration, but also uh, discouragement. So, yeah. That's, that's amazing. That's, that. like, that's, a, that's a perfect idea for where we are right now. That's totally where we're going. Does anybody else want to say something about the inner critic? Although that's a great, that's a great place to start off, Sean. I see Sophia Palmero's hand. Sophia, go ahead. Sophia, you're, you are unmuted. Hey. Hey, Sophia, um, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to Thanks be here. Thanks for being here. Um, to me, the inner critic feels like the amalgamation of voices hmm. that you, I guess, pick up through your life, whether it be like your teachers or your friends or your family, and eventually I think yourself too, mm -hmm. um, that just have something to say about absolutely everything that you're doing. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it's good and sometimes it's bad and often it's bad. But I think it depends very much on the voices that were speaking to you in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and I think that's that's sort of what it is. Yeah, that's great. Thank you both. Thank you, Sean and Sophia. Those were really great responses and are really getting us going toward where, we're, toward where we're going. So keep those things in mind, your own ideas of what an inner critic is. And then we're actually next, we're gonna look at, you can see right here, we have these some great poems for reference. So we're only gonna look at one of these in the current moment, but I really encourage you to look at all of these. And in my mind, I really think of poetry, for those of you who know me, um, you know that for me, poetry and playwriting are really intertwined. Um, so I'm always sort of looking at poetry as sort of inspiration for my playwriting and vice versa. And I think that the two forms really speak to each other. So we're going to look first at, um, we're, we're off to only going to today because of our limited time, we're going to look at Triple Sonnet for My Aggressive Forehead by Dorothy Chan. And I'm wondering if we have um, anybody, any actors in the room who would like to give us a little bit of a reading. I don't mind reading it, but I would love to have someone else read it. Thea, could you help us out? You could use Yeah, it. absolutely. Thank you. Uh, Renee, you are unmuted. Oh, nice. <laughs> hey, hey, Renee, uh, how are hey. you? Good, good, thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you for being here. Are you down to read Triple Sonnet for my aggressive forehead? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, great. Now, if I'm scrolling not fast enough, or just let me know, okay? Sure, sure. Dad thinks my forehead is too Godzilla, too Tarzan, too Wonder Woman. Tells me not to tie my hair back, exposing it like it's the Frankenstein monster from beneath my childhood bed, or the mollusk that changed the world, that challenged the world, rather. And Dad, I love you but you should know that I am a nightmare as a woman who can make the earth stand still, calling all UFOs from planets beyond to paint me on canvas just as I am. A Chinese girl nicknamed Yellow Fever, chowing down on all the pork buns and chicken biscuits and shrimp bon mi at the, buff at the buffet, and of course, all the men. As I star in my own B movie, gave it an XXX. Every girl's dream of playing opposite King Kong, and you know I'm not some Fay Ray type who screams at the sight of a hand. And dad, I think about all the ape toys you bought me when I was a child because you never wanted me to be alone, never wanted me to go a day without laughing or plotting. And did I mention that you were born on Halloween, which makes me half evil? I'm joking. But dad, you've got to let me keep my forehead, despite your old school Chinese beliefs of girls hiding their warrior brains. And I know you're just looking out for me. But my forehead has its own life, like an invisible screen, one way glass where the admin are watching the women try on lipstick. But in my forehead, it's the other way around because let's let the boys play and the girls watch for once because every lip could use a bit more rouge, purple, crimson, burnt orange, hot pink. How at once I wanna dress up as a flight attendant, an accountant, 
someone at the front of the class holding a ruler. And yes, if I fill out a survey from a sex magazine, I'm checking off forehead as my favorite body part. <laughs> Isn't that great? Thank you, Renee. That was a great reading. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Snaps for Renee. <laughs> Woo. All right. Um, so I love that. I love that poem so much. To me, it's like such a monologue. Um, and in my mind, Dorothy Chan is speaking to her dad as her inner critic, right? Um, so now this is gonna bring us to our first exercise. We're getting to the juice, to the fun stuff. And part one is going to be you naming your inner critic. So now I really want you to think about this. So it's, it can be a good name or a goofy name. Oh, get out, yes, please get out your, your whatever form of writing you would like, your utensils, your, if you're using your laptop or if you're using pen and paper, um, whatever your preferred method of writing is. Um, and so, so this first exercise, I just want you to think about it. It can, be, it can be a good name or a goofy name. It can be the name of a real person from your own life, or it can be entirely made up. Um, your inner cr critic might not be a person. It could be an object or it could be an animal. I, but the one thing that I ask for you to choose is that for it to make it personal, even if it's an object. Let's say you have you know, a mouse who hasn't been able to leave your fucking house and you're just like going crazy then maybe that's your inner critic, you know? For me, I'm just gonna get real personal here and just say that I decided to name my crit inner critic after a generic white man's name. And so I cho chose the name Bill. Um, that is my own, obviously my own personal issue. <laughs> and that was how I decided to name my inner critic and it was based on something that I was dealing with. So I really, really encourage you to think about what is, you know, it could be a first name and a last name. It could just be a first name. But whenever you hear that voice in your head, you know, as Sean and Sophia were sort of saying to us, what is the, what is the name that you hear associated with that? Um, and actually Virginia Woolf, which I thought was so cool as I was looking, as I was sort of investigating this, Virginia Woolf apparently did this very thing and she would name um, her, these voices in her head, which I think is pretty amazing. So you're in good company. So we're just going to take, I really want you to think about this. So please take like the next two minutes, two to three minutes and, and write down your inner critics name. So we're just going to take a few minutes for that. I'm going to put a little timer on. You'll hear the chime. <laughs> Okay, we got about a minute left. I'm really hoping people want to share these later. <laughs> about 30 seconds. All right. Okay, it's our alarm. Um, okay, how's everybody feeling about that? You got thumbs up, feeling pretty good, feeling pretty good, awesome. Okay, so the next, I included all these fun little cartoons just for fun, because you know. Uh, so the next part of this is going to be write a character sketch for this person. Now, 
I really want, I said here, it can be as simple as a name and a description or a slightly more involved paragraph, but I really want you to like dig deep here. Um, really like think about this person. So really imagine the character that is this inner critic. Who is this person? If they're not an actual person in the world, imagine them as one. If they are, feel free to borrow some things from their life or things that you know, things that you don't know. Feel free to imagine other things. Really think about like sort of you're writing out a character sketch for this person, your inner critic, for Bill. And right now, what do I think about Bill's life? Um, what is their family life? Where did they grow up? How old are they? I, I just what I wrote this Tina Howe quote, which I really love because I think it's it's it really is guiding for me, which is all the events are true, but none of them ever happened. And um, I had this really great professor in grad school named Frank Pugliesi, and he used to tell us that actually he would base all of his characters on real people, which not everyone does. I think for me, I, I sort of love the idea of a lot of a mix of a lot of people. So I think with your inner critic maybe as Sophia said, it's a lot of different voices. So what are some things of these different voices? What are characteristics of all of these different voices that you're hearing that you can pull into this character? Um, so we're gonna take about five minutes here uh, to, to write out a little bit of a character sketch. And then if we're feeling like we need more time, we can always give a little bit more time and also know that you can always come back to this. So we're gonna, I'm gonna put a timer on for five minutes and go for it. I wish I had background music for y'all. <laughs> Got about two and a half minutes left. I really encourage you to get to know this, this person or thing.
just got a little bit under a minute left. Everybody in a good place? Okay. All right. Great. I'm excited to hear what everyone's everyone's uh, inner critics are like. Um, okay. So the next part, this is probably, you know, to me, I think the most important part of this exercise. And this is part four, which is making a list of things that you love about your inner critic. Um, now, I really think that like the most important part of this exercise is actually something that Sean was saying earlier, which is what are the good things actually about this person? Like really imagining this person, this thing, this critic, having compassion for them. You're going to like invite them into the room. Like imagine, imagine they're walking into your room right now, or maybe they're Skyping with them because it is, we're in shelter in place, but <laughs> Imagine yourself being in a room with them and rather than avoiding them, embracing them. I really want you to think about like, what do you love about this person? Maybe, maybe, you know, Bill, he's a total curmudgeon. Maybe he's a snappy dresser. Maybe he's incredibly intelligent or observant despite himself, but really like think about a list of, and I don't think it's actually going to take us this long, but really think about a list of 10 things that you love about this person. So we'll start. I'm going to give us about, I don't think we're probably going to need more than five minutes. So I'm going to give us five minutes and we'll see how everyone's doing. For about three minutes or give us a little bit more time. I'm trying to look around the Zoom, see how everybody's doing. So nice to see so many familiar faces and names. It's gonna take a little bit more time.
How's everybody feeling? People feeling like they need a little bit more time? Give me a thumbs up if you're thinking you need a little bit more time. Looks like people are pretty, pretty good to, to go on. Okay, great. All right, so the next part after, now that we have our list, I want you to think about free writing, a scene, a monologue, a journal entry in conversation with this character. Now, the other character could be you, or it could be an, another invented character, perhaps a character or voice you've written before or that you enjoy. Um, there's The thing about this is that it's totally for you and there's no pressure for how this comes out or what it looks like. The main, the main point of this is just to get some words down on paper, but really think about this person that you have created for yourself who is your inner critic and or, or many of your inner critics and really put them into a piece of writing in this moment. So we're gonna take about, let's take about five minutes. We'll take about five minutes and start thinking about a scene. Um, and then if we need a little more time, we can take a little bit more time. So anybody have any questions? You guys feeling, feeling good? I realize it's hard. Luckily I have Talak over here just like nodding. <laughs> Great, okay, let's take another, let's take five minutes and and write out uh and write out these these scenes slash monologues slash journal entries slash whatever you want them to be I'm just going to add one thing while we're in the midst of working on these. We have about a little over a minute. We can keep going, but I always think about whenever I'm writing a new scene or just writing something blank, 
from scratch that I often think about for Ness and how she used to say that a scene can really just be two people existing in a space. So not trying to think about what is dramatic about this, but just what is, who are these people and how are they talking to each other? Okay, so we're coming up on five minutes. How's everybody doing? Are we thinking we want a little bit more time? Maybe a little bit? No, we're good. That's how long is my favorite. He's like, uh, he's like, oh, we're good, we're good. Well, this is obviously something that I hope that you will continue working on or that you know the tools that are involved in this that you will take with you long after this or use if, if it's helpful for you. Um, really sort of the next part of this personally is I just would love to talk to all of y'all, um, to anyone who's open to discussing like, what is this, how are these exercises for you? Is this helpful? What elements of it are working for you? Um, did you feel like you were able to kind of connect with this inner critic? Do you want to share with us the name of your inner critic or anything that you've written today? Um, I would really love to hear from y'all for the next, you know, five to 10 minutes or so. If, if Theo wants to help us out, we can use our... Yeah, I see one hand up. Seth, you are... Seth! Unmuted. Hello! Hello, Seth! Welcome! Hi, CQ. I've been loving this class. Thank oh, you. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Um, yeah, you know, it's interesting. I hadn't thought of my inner critic too much, but writing him, he, he instantly took form. Uh, <laughs> my inner critic's name is Charles, Ooh. and... Uh, and he's a fabulous gay man who is uh, somehow both older and wiser and younger and more hip than I am. <laughs> and, and I can see him. I feel like I can see him. I, I know. The, the, it was funny. The hardest thing for me was writing the things that we're supposed to love about him. Uh, I felt such, I uh, had this powerful emotional reaction. I was so mm. afraid of him yeah. uh, that I couldn't, you know, I was just afraid he was going to say something. Uh, that would just absolutely cut me to the quick. And so, uh, you know, finally I was right. Well, you know, Charles is very thoughtful and observant and, and occasionally can be compassionate with his amazing powers. But normally Charles just, uh, you know, slices you to bits with his razor sharp wit. Um, so yeah, I, it was interesting. I love that. Um, that was sort I of... Yeah. So, so in that, it seems like a great care, like a great character to write for you. I'm already like, I just, I had said like my heart's pounding and I'm like, oh God, why do my fingers feel thick and clumsy? So uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Um, thank you for sharing, Seth. Did you want to, did you want to say anything else? No, I'm all good. I'll, now great. I'll listen. <laughs> thank, thank you for sharing. That's amazing. I think we have a couple other raised hands. That's great. Renee, you are unmuted. Oh, awesome. Um, I think hey, it's, this is a wonderful. Hey, how are you? You doing okay? Yeah, it's good. Thank you for sharing our, uh, for uh, reading our poem earlier. Oh, thank you. It was, uh, it was, it was wonderful. And it, it really affected me reading it. Um, I didn't think it was. I thought I was just going to read something and uh, be able to, to participate. But reading it really 
I could feel the pain, you know, and I could associate it with, you know, I'm obviously not a Chinese girl, but uh, so much empathy. Um, going back to the exercise, I think this mm -hmm. is a great exercise. Uh, speaking as a straight Latino male, I think this is an exercise that should have been done very, very long time ago for me. <laughs> <laughs> for all of us. <laughs> um, for all of us. For all of us. Um, so my inner critic, I think, again, this is obviously just me, but um, my my father comes into mind. My father comes into mind. He's a very positive person, very mm -hmm. positive role model and, and shaped me for the man that I am today. But at the same time, he was always very protective of me, always mm -hmm. trying to look out for the best. Um, uh, so, yeah, my, my inner critic was very protective. He was always looking out for my best interests doesn't want me to get hurt, doesn't want me to get injured, ridiculed. Mm. Um, and everything that is occurring at the moment, he has experienced it uh, already and he knows best. Um, Was it he, easier he wants, for you? No, oh, sorry, keep going, Renee, sorry. Uh, he, he wants me to take the same, the safe route. Um, and this is, I found this very interesting. I, mm. um, again, I'm speaking about my, uh, my inner critic who yeah. resembles my father, not my father. Yeah. Uh, he he wants he wants he um he never wants me to be in a place of vulnerability, or more importantly, perceived vulnerability. So where anybody else thinks that I look weak, even though mm. that could not be the case. Mm. You know, I could be making that up. But he is so protective of me. My my mm -hmm. my inner critic is so protective of me. Um, that he wants to protect me from any possible angle. Um, and, and I found that to be very revealing. And I appreciate the, the exercise. I'm so glad that it was helpful for you. I was actually going to ask if, I, I think that's so interesting. Like, I feel like basing sometimes if, if, you know, if you base a character or like really thinking about your inner critic as such a personal, that's why I picked that poem. So I love that you kind of based yours on your father as well. Because I think there's something about that voice that I wondered if it was almost, if it was harder to think of the bad things or harder to think of the, the you know, the 10 things that you love about the person. I almost wonder if there should be a part of the exercise that's like, what are 10 things you hate about the person and 10 things that you love about the person, you know? <laughs> that's like, yeah. yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. Well, please feel free to take it and, you know, and morph it however is helpful for you. But thank I you will, so yeah, much for sharing, you. Renee. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Becca Chapman, you are unmuted. Hi, everyone. Becca Chapman, hello. Hi, from New Orleans. Me. All the way from New Orleans. Oh. <laughs> it's my hometown. Yeah, yes. I love Becca. She's an amazing <laughs> actress. Thank you. Thank you for all of this. Um, yeah, this was very, this exercise was very, 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 um, oh, thank you. Sorry, I started my video now. Sorry if you backlighted. Anyway, <laughs> um, yes, this exercise is very interesting because I at first was like, oh, it's my dad or it's my first grade teacher, but then it, it allowed me to create a character that allowed um, a mixture of all of the things, cool. which was so much more freeing. And um, I needed that to, to stop blaming mm. personally. Uh, to on my quest to stop blaming but her name is little one <laughs> and she which i'm a, I, i'm sitting but i'm actually four foot eleven so most of my yeah. life i've been called little one i love that um <laughs> and she's this little girl with big wearing big heels and like a big big hat that thinks she owns everything and is telling me everything i should be doing all the time i love it <laughs> And it's like, she's gossipy, she's demanding, she's judgy, super hot tempered. Um, she's a little brat that get, never gets her way, but gets everything she wants oh, at I the same that. time. So it's like a mixture. What do you um, love about her? Cause she's adorable and as angry as she gets, the funnier she gets, mm -hmm. I think. Like, and, um, and because I think she just, she's sad. Like it makes me kind of be a little more compassionate. It's like, oh, this person just wants to be nurtured in a way that they don't know how. Yeah. possibly um I love that yeah, yeah. No, I know I mean honestly I thought first thought about this because literally in a therapy session I had this inner critic that I named and I my therapist was like invite Bill into the room why mm. is Bill hurting 
Yeah. And I literally couldn't stop thinking about that idea of like, what does it mean to actually invite that person? And what, and I love what you're saying about it's true. Like, you know, people who are usually that angry are that angry for a reason, right? So yeah. there's a lot to mine there. I love that you combined a bunch of different people too. I think that's, that's such, it, there's something so freeing about that too, because then nobody can be like, oh, you base this off of like whoever. And it's like, nope, I based it off of five <laughs> people. Uh, <laughs> That's all the people I I could base themselves. I love it. So (laughs) thank you for sharing, Becca. I appreciate it. Thanks. No problem. Thanks for this. Next up, we have Sean. Sean, you're unmuted. Hey, Sean. All right. Hey, CQ. How are you? This is this is amazing. Um, Thank you for joining us. Yeah, I'm I'm not a playwright, so and I decided to why not give it a shot? And I love um, it. We can all write plays. So this this was yeah this was definitely very helpful naming my inner critic um uh, my inner critic's name is jim which is based on somebody that i know uh-huh. um here in my community here in allentown um yeah and it's uh he's just your average guy who has enjoyed being a gatekeeper for way too long um mm. and i feel like mm. i feel like um the what i love section was really really helpful just because um on the outside there are a lot of things that I'm just like I could see me being friends with this guy and I could Mm. see myself getting along with him if it wasn't for the fact that he was holding on to this exclusionary model Mm. of making art um Mm. and I and I and I started feeling sympathy for him just because I mean I don't want to say sympathy but like but like I'm just like he feels like he, I feel like he's scared. I think he's yeah. seeing his, his way of life mm. going away. Not to say that that's not a good thing. And I really hope that his, his way of thinking does go away, but mm. um, it really made me understand what he's dealing with. And I mean, I wrote my scene and like the first thing of the first line of the scene I wrote with him is like, basically a conversation I've wanted to have with him for a long time. And it's basically like, why don't you like me? Like, why mm. can't we have a conversation? Why do you shut down? Why do you shut down all of my ideas right away? Why can't- Oh, I love that you just went um, there. That's awesome. Yeah, and I mean, who knows? Maybe I'll have the courage to just shoot him a message and just say like, can we just talk? Um, but- That's um, really cool. I'm glad that it no, could this be was just very, a healing exercise this was just for really you. Helpful. That's awesome. Keep going, keep writing it yeah. too. <laughs> Thanks for oh coming, my gosh! I'm, I, yeah, I'm scribbling away. This is going to be on for. I'm going to keep going with this for a while. Good. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks, Sean. Appreciate it. Next up, we have Alex. Alex, you're unmuted. What? Alice or Alex? I couldn't hear. Oh, Alex. Okay. Alex. Hi. Yes. Hi. How are you? Welcome. Thank you. I'm so nervous right now. <laughs> no, don't be nervous. I'm so. We're so glad you're here. I can't hear you for some reason for a minute. Now. A little bit better. Okay. It's just quiet. It's a little quiet. If, if, if I speak closer to the micro, can you hear me? We can hear you a little bit better. 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 Okay, I guess I'll speak to my computer <laughs> very closely. <laughs> can you hear me? We can hear you a little bit. Yeah. You can also type in the chat if that's helpful. Maybe maybe we can. Yeah, why don't you go ahead and get headphones while you do that? We'll come back. Yeah. Soul, Soul, you are unmuted. Soul. Now I'll come back to you. Hey, homie. Hey, friend. Oh, I love this look. Uh, it's so good to see so many wonderful faces that I have not seen in so long, and so many new faces. Um, CQ, this was dope. I did not expect. I didn't know what to expect. Um, we're in that period of life, right? Where we're just flowing. So yeah. So this was really dope because- I'm glad it was good for you. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, like, like other people have mentioned, it was a really scary, really scary process, but I think so powerful to name it. Yeah. Um, to identify, that's like the first thing that you're taught when you have panic attacks or like heavy mm-hmm. feelings is like, okay, name the feeling. Mm-hmm. So this is really dope. So my inner critic is Gladys. 
and <laughs> she loves to consume. She, uh, her hair is most likely in rollos. I don't know how to say that in English. Rollers, <laughs> rollers yeah. Uh, she wears sunglasses and she smacks gum really loudly. And she's just like, How old is Gladys? She's like in her 50s. Okay, yeah. You know, been there, done that. Um, <laughs> She's, she's a very nosy tia. She's like one of those nosy aunts that is all up in your business, but never actually offers you a good solution for your shit. She's never actually happy for you. Um, what do you so love about her? What I love about her is that she loves who she is, like period, without a doubt. Mm. She, she has no qualms about who she is. Um, and sometimes her tough love for me is like, you need to also love who you are, you know? Mm. And that mm, was, that's cool. <laughs> that so she, she like gives you, she's like that friend who's real with you. Like she's real, like, you're like, no, 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 no. But anyway, here's what happened. <laughs> a moment on the lips is a lifetime on the hips. It's what she said to me as I reached for another Oreo cookie, which is kind of funny because Gladys is fat. We call her La Gordis. Her body shape is round and everything jiggles. You don't want to end up like me. Camera adds 10 pounds, so you don't need that Oreo cookie. Fine, I say, but now I'm mad. Oh, now you're mad? Yes. What, because I told you not to have another Oreo cookie? Yes. And you do everything that other people tell you to do? <laughs> I guess so. Ay, nena, tú no aprende. You don't learn anything? So... <laughs> And then you said time was up, and I was like, thank God. Keep going, girl. Yes. That was great. But what I want to say is that this is really helpful because the next time I sit down to write, the next time I, you know, before an audition, and whenever I feel Gladys come up, I can be like, cool, we can, we yeah. can, do what you were saying, like invite Bill into the space. I legit have this post-it post note on my wall, it says, ask Bill why he's here, have compassion for him, be besties with Bill. It's good, every time, every time you go down to write, I love that, you know? Now you can talk to her or him or them or whoever it is, so that's awesome. Thanks for sharing, Soul, that was great. Great. Wonderful, all right, I think Alice, are you ready to go again? You are you on. Muted. Hey Alice, do we hear you now? Uh, unfortunately, I can't hear you. Oh. Alice, feel free to write to me if you like. I, I put my email in the document, so feel free to write to me. I can't. I'm unfortunately I can't hear you at all right now. Yeah, go ahead and through messages. Yeah, go ahead and type that in the chat. Through beautiful. All right. So I'm so sorry, Alice. Next time. I'm sorry, Alice. Thank you so uh, much. And if you do feel, if you do figure it out, go ahead and, and DM me in the chat here. Uh, and we are going to go to Irene Villasenor. You're unmuted. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hi, CQ. Hey, how um, you doing? Good. I'm here in Harlem. And I really love this. As you know, like I'm not a playwright. Um, you know me from poetry for, through Sarah. Um, Iran is an amazing poet. Amazing. Okay. Poet. <laughs> Thank you. Um, usually I write business like emails and academic <laughs> essays. So it was really fun to like uh, get like, you know, be eased into like playwriting and all that sort of stuff because I usually don't even do anything with fiction either and so like my inner critic I was trying I was struggling to come up with like a name and a concept so I came up with the name Vidalia like the onion because <laughs> she seems sweet but she actually is stinky um and so she reminds me of a friend that I'm taking a break from and oh I also <laughs> wanted to say that <laughs> I really enjoyed the poem that was read earlier because I'm also part Chinese. And so my character is kind of like mixed race, Asian, you know, indigenous, Latinx type of person. However, she tries really hard to fit into the mainstream. Mm -hmm. She loves to wear matching sweater sets and pearls like a grown up prep school girl. <laughs> She's boring. But a grown up, actually, I like grown up press, prep school girl as a description. Yeah, I didn't know I had uh, these deep seated issues still. 
when, Girl, we uh, all have our issues. That's what this yeah. is about. Embrace, embrace. Yeah. Like Vidalia looks boring, but actually is capable of being incredibly vicious. She tries to offer caring advice, but sometimes turns out to actually be manipulative and undermining. So, so what do you love about her, Ren? Um, I love that she's a savvy observer of life and knows a lot of people and gains wisdom from talking to everyone. Even though mm. she looks like a snob, she's actually not. <laughs> <laughs> she's actually like radical um, in certain ways um, and is very generous to others. Uh, and is open to intuitive and like, um, you know, extra perceptual experiences. So cool. it's kind really of cool. like this mixed bag, but you know, it's kind of like you feel safe usually around her, except when she suddenly attacks you. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Sounds like souls too. That was, <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you for sharing your and Thank you. And Thank I you really appreciate you. it. I'm glad it was helpful for you. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. That was great. I think we have like four more people and then I know if, yeah, I, I, I would love to hear from everyone before. I know, I don't know how, how interested people are in hearing from me, but we'll, we'll try to have maybe a couple of questions at the end if people want that. Uh, Roxanne, you are unmuted. Thank you. Uh, did we want to try Alice again or are we going to no. I'm sorry, Alice. Okay, sorry. I just wanted to make sure we did. I know. Th thank you um, for that, Roxanne. How are you? Hi, CQ. This is awesome. I'm really, I'm, I'm really, so glad really you liked it. it. And um, how, yeah, this is just super innovative. And um, um, so I had one of my playwriting teachers, Susan Zeter, once said, you can't be both critic and artist at the same time. And I'm like, right. But I never went into that and really mm -hmm. leaned into it. So this was pretty cathartic. Um, and so I'm really excited about it. So my inner critic's name is uh, Mrs. Box. <laughs> and she, she's pretty perfect. She's all about the comma. And she, uh, you know, everything is everything is perfect. Oxford and, commas. Yeah, yeah. She, she knows it all there. And um, she, she, everything like her hair is perfect. And even in the wind, she's, mm. you know, it doesn't blow in the wind and she's just perfect. And her, the bottoms of the soles of her shoes are like clean all the time. And she's just perfect. Um, and what and do you love about her? Yeah, that's the part that I was surpri really surprised by. So what mm -hmm. I realized about Mrs. Box is that um, she just wants to help. She really desperately mm. wants to help. And she gets, um, like, I'm feeling this right now in my life. So like, I was like, oh, that's what's going on. She's, she just gets paralyzed when she can't. Mm. Um, and she feels like there's nothing she can do or that she's not mm. given an opportunity to help. So oh, that was wow. pretty, pretty deep for that's me. Amazing. So thank you for that. I'm so glad. And were you able to write any of what was like the, like a scene or a monologue or anything? Did anything come out of it? Were yeah, she was, she, she came to the door and she kept knocking and it's pretty perfect. And I was hiding <laughs> and, uh, and she, and then she just, uh, finally I opened the door and I was like, I'm busy. And she just came in anyway. And, mm. um, and then, yeah. And then she, she, I, I was like, I'm really busy. And she's like, you don't want me. I'm just here to help. Like, mm. so. That's amazing. Well, thank you for sharing that, Roxanne. I'm really glad it was helpful for you. Thank you. I'm enjoying it awesome. so much. Thank you yeah. so much. Keep going. <laughs> I hope you keep going. Next up, we have Sofia Palmero. You're unmuted. Hi, Sofia. Hey. hey. <laughs> Sorry, I was muted. How are you? Oh, no, that's okay. I, know. I actually didn't see you for a moment. So it was I'm good. This was, I, I loved your whole like medicinal playwriting like that speaks so deeply to me because I you know I, I've been feeling really recently like a lot of art is almost like re-traumatizing is sort of what it feels <laughs> like like there's a lot of exploitation of trauma um, for the sake of like shock and uh, I think that it's good to bring light to some things and I think that it's important but I, I have been very interested recently in how we can use art to heal and imagine a better world for ourselves um, and mm. for each other so this spoke a lot to me. Um, my my inner critic is uh, me and Becca must live in the same mental space because <laughs> mine is her name is Itty Bitty, and oh, she's I love a that. tiny 
<laughs> almost like it came from the idea of like the Lizzie McGuire drawing, you know, how it flashes <laughs> over to her. Um, it feels like that. So she's this tiny five-year-old, but she doesn't have an actual voice. She can only speak in snippets and recordings of other people's voices oh um, and splice them together. However, it expresses her feelings, but sometimes she likes to just use direct quotes from people. Um, and the, I think one of the reasons why that really spoke to me was because I, I find that my inner critic has no ill intention. Um, and it's not trying to like, you know, like itty bitty is very naive. She's very, you know, she'll occasionally throw a temper tantrum. Um, and like those temper tantrums are when she really throws out the really, really, you know, poisonous kind of thing, uh, that she, that she says, um, but then she'll take a nap. And then when she wakes up, it's like, nothing ever happened. <laughs> and, um, and what do you love about her? What do I love about her? She, um, she is very passionate in mm. either in her criticism or in her praise. Mm. Uh, she's always going 110 for that. Um, and she's <laughs> very innocent uh, and naive. And, and because of that, I find that she's always honest to what she feels, even if it's not mm. always the truth. Um, but sometimes, even if she's very harsh, under there, you can find something that has a little nugget of truth that you can take and, and morph to help you move forward. So. That's cool. Thank yeah. you so much for sharing that. I'm actually curious if when you wrote, did you write her in the section that you wrote during our time together? Did you write her as just like speaking in quotations? Or was it like a scene that way? That's so cool. I love yeah. that. It's really neat. Cool. Thank you for sharing, Thank Sophia. Thank you. Yeah. Next up, so we great. have Ika. Hi, Ika. Hi. Hi, everyone. Well, Thank you for being here. Nice. Thanks. I'm, I'm an actor and a filmmaker. Um, Love it. I did a lot of theater, though. But I wanted to show my little drawing. Oh, my God. What an amazing drawing. And this is Purple. Um, that's her name. And I was really surprised because um, I think it's, when you were saying the uh, your inner critic, I was thinking about something really ugly and scary mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And this lady is very elegant. And, yeah. um, and she doesn't have legs because she she just flies around. She doesn't need any any legs. And I like the fact that she doesn't have to look at me. Oh, I love it. Me. You see, she talks a lot. I love that detail that she doesn't have legs. I love that so much. Yeah, she likes to talk a lot. And um, the other thing that I like is they has two faces. She has mm. two faces herself and is coming from the past. So that's like the main things that I, the highlights about her. And her, the monologue that came out, you know, more or less. Yeah, yeah. The part that I like is that it is very simple and she mm -hmm. wants me to talk about simple things and not be too complicated, too intellectual, mm -hmm. go to the basics. Uh. Well, then she, even though she's sophisticated and elegant, she came to me talking about the basics. Mm. So the monologue more or less says like, um, I, I write, I wrote everything. Oh yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh my dear, finally you call me. What's for dinner? Oh, <laughs> she smirks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so she says, oh, I know that you're a great cook, um, but who cares about these uh, pasta quarantines that you're doing? And what about your rice? Oh my God, your rice is amazing. And if you can make something so good about something so simple as rice just please forget about cooking and then um i think you have some magic and you see you see this um light blue light that i have here oh yeah i see in that my hands do you know why because now your hands and my hands my alien hands are together Ooh. Can I just ask before, that was amazing. Thank you for sharing with us, Ika. What, is, what do you love about her? Um, I like that she takes time to tell me what I need to hear. Mm. And then she elaborates a lot. Mm. Yes. That. And uh, also, uh, yeah, the fact, oh, also I like that she loves money. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yes. What a great. <laughs> yes, she really loves money and she has that in one of her 
of her lips here. You see? Oh, I see that. She's got the dollar yes. sign there. That's so <laughs> yes. funny. So I found that interesting. Like Does that, that feel very different from you? Does it, was it just something that came up? Like it's, um, no, it's a little bit similar, but the fact that she comes from the past is kind of different from me mm. because I, I, I do not, you know, I, I live very much in the present. Mm. I think so. That's, yes. That's really cool. Thank you, Ika, and, and everyone. This was amazing. I love, that was like my favorite part was just hearing everyone share. This has been so, this has been so special. Um, and thank you. Did we have one more hand up, Amy? Oh, we or... did? Oh. Here, did we have another one? I, I put my hand down because I want to hear CQ. I want people to be able to ask CQ <laughs> questions if they okay. have. Amy, you can obviously always please write to me. But I do want to know your, I want to know who your critic is. If you want oh, to I'll, I'll say the name of my critic, which yes. is a uh, stained mattress in an abandoned building full with, filled with mouse droppings. <laughs> Does your mattress have a name, Amy? Uh, no, doesn't even, <laughs> doesn't even have a name. Whoa, no name. That's no. deep. That's dark. I'm into it. CQ, I have a question for you. Yes. I wonder how much this exercise uh, did you, um, how much is this is tied into, and I'm, I'm going to, I'm just going to generalize. I'm just of course, example, please. Is this idea of, of a, in the case of growing up Latino, Latina, Latinx, uh, the idea of shame, the idea mm. of, uh, yeah. of uh, you know, like the, the kind of pressures that, that kind of exist within our own community. I'm curious how, yeah was there was there sort of like a oh I felt this because of my own cultural background or where I grew up or, or yeah or did this inner critic kind of come into play in a in a different yeah. way for you? No, it's a great question. I mean I think for a lot of us who are Latinx or or immigrants or children of immigrants like I am, I think there's so much pressure that a lot of us sort of face to kind of be you know the greatest <laughs> you know in whatever capacity and I think like sort of compounded with you know I grew up in the south and uh, you know our family at the time was a very small Latinx community in New Orleans and so we were sort of othered that way and then I was queer in a very catholic kind of family and community and so I think all of those things and all of those voices that I actually find are you know in conversations I've had in a lot a long time of therapy are sort of what kind of actually both are, you know, it's like the, it's the bad and the good, because I think, which is why I, like this exercise I think is so substantial because it's like those voices are also what keep us going. They're also, you know, biting at our heels and having us continuing typing and writing these stories and filling these pages, you know, as much as sort of that hurt, you know, is also there. Um, so I think like absolutely, you know, those critics, I mean, I, I, I think a lot, I think a lot about those things. And I think that's definitely played a part. Um, interestingly enough, I mean, I think in some of my plays, definitely like more directly um, sort of play with shame and the idea of shame, but, um, and sort of how we combat that and combat those voices. I mean, scissoring is so that conversation, but, um, and then it's definitely something I think about in poetry a lot. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And for if asking. anybody else wants to ask questions, this is the time. I take them all. I take any. And this is water. In case you were wondering, not that exciting at four p.m. Do we have any other questions? I think, oh, two participants raised hands, I see oh, now. Yes, here we are. Amy, you are unmuted. I was just gonna ask how this relation, and as writers, which is a isolating experience to begin with, but how how is this isolation and this quarantine and, and the, the trauma that's existing from all of, of what's going on, how has that changed or affected your writing? Mm, that's a great question, Amy. Um, thank you for being here also. Uh, I think that I am a person who, um, I'm a mover and I always have been. Um, and I'm really bad and I've gotten better at it as I've gotten older, but I think I usually like in the face of 
drastic change or grief, I usually just keep going, keep going, keep going until suddenly I really have, I'm standing, you know, in, you know, neck high water, like, holy shit, this is going on, you know? Um, so I have gotten a bit better at it. And I think, um, I am just also trying to like really acknowledge that and check in with myself and like where I am. And I just actually posted this amazing thing today that was all about like talking about productivity. And I think just like all of us just sort of take in everything going on in different ways. And for me, actually writing is, has always been healing. Um, like when I, the first I grew up in New Orleans, Hurricane Katrina was happening and had to evacuate and all, et cetera, et cetera. And like, when I think about for me, like sort of the, I was always writing, but like when my art making really began was sort of in the wake of that crisis. Um, and I think that I actually kind of just really respond to it. Um, but at the same time, like, I feel like there's been days I've had good days and bad days, you know, I've been lucky that I've still had some work, but it's been like, and I've been really in a way that I've been trying to discipline myself. I'm, I'm usually good at writing anywhere, anytime, whenever, but especially with one project I've been working on, I've been like every morning trying to before 12 noon, make sure that I'm absolutely like trying to get, you know, these things on paper, just because I think I've kind of needed that discipline. And then I found when I didn't discipline myself, actually, the next day I had like this very, I was feeling very anxious um, in a way that was really interesting. And I think I just kind of like needed to set up that routine for myself. But I think that, um, yeah, I, I think that it's, it's hard. And I think it's like a day to day thing. And I think like acknowledging that we're all struggling. I mean, I had a day a couple of days ago where I just like read this article I posted about it, but I read this article that was just sort of talking about a lot of those lost. And I just like cried. Like, I just was like, wow. Oh my God. Like, it was just like suddenly like seeing the faces of all of these people and hearing the sirens every day. And it's just how that kind of gets inside of your body, even if you are just like in your house. Anyway, that's a long winded answer, but I hope it's helpful. <laughs> okay. And we have one more question from Vane. You are unmuted. Hi, uh, Hi Vanik. Vanik. Vanik, it's nice to meet you. Nice also, to meet what you. what an amazing microphone. I love this. Thank you. <laughs> um, so my question, um, I'm not going to presume that this is the same for everybody, uh, but being that it's our inner critic, uh, chances are it's most likely just ourselves. Um, so as writers, I think, uh, as creatives, I think it all comes from ourselves in one way or another. Oh, yeah. uh, may we separate our personalities or not. Um, so when dealing with your inner critic or whoever that voice is that you're experiencing at the time of your creativity, how concerned are you that you are telling the same story over and over and over again? And what is your experience with that? Well, it's, it's like, it's right. It's like Edward Albee said, we're just writing the same play over and over again. You know, I think it's, um, you know, it's, a, it's such a good question. Uh, it's, I almost feel like at this point in my life, I, there was a time when I was so concerned with, when I was in grad school, I was in grad school pretty young. And I remember just being so concerned with like, what kind like being like what was going to be my thing as a playwright like what were people going to remember as me as a writer like what is that thing and it's so funny is because I I think as I have gotten older to me it's just like it's just mining deeper you know like it's just it's actually like kind of beautiful that like sort of we are obsessed with these questions and we are the people who are going to keep revisiting those things you know and like i think it's our jobs as artists also to then like sort of police ourselves a little bit and see i mean there are definitely times when i've been like oh you know this play like i feel like i'm you know kind of even formatting it like a similar like not formatting but like a lot of people say my plays are like poems so like, you know, if sometimes I have a couple of plays where I was like, wow, that's really interesting. Even though I wrote these plays at totally different times, they sort of are similar to each other in the way that they're mapped out, you know? And I didn't do that necessarily on purpose. So I think it's like par partially like on us to be like, how can I push myself a little further? And it's like, I'm gonna still, I know myself, I'm always gonna be investigating ideas of home, of, of otherness, of, of in between because those are the things that I'm obsessed with but like how can I actually sort of I don't think that those conversations ever get old and I think as of now I've written over 10 plays and 
you know, a lot of different things. And I, I like to think that, you know, they each are different, you know? So I think it's like, you can't get in your head too much about, about that concern because it'll just stop you, you know? Is that helpful? Absolutely. Yeah. Good. Thank you so much for being here and for your microphone. Sorry. That was great. <laughs> We had one more question come in okay. from Alice over the chat. Oh, uh, great. What is the first thing you think about when you begin writing a play? The first thing I think about, hmm, you know, it's so funny because I, it's sort of, I feel like it's, it's just like a, it sounds so annoying, but like, it's just like a spark. Like I hear, I often hear a voice, like I hear a line of dialogue or sometimes I'll actually like see, like a, I'll have like almost like a log line like my play Azul, like I literally actually, it came to me as like the main kind of idea of what the, like I knew, I was like, I want it to be about three women. And it's about this woman who uh, her mother is, you know, never taught her Spanish and leaves her and she left her tia nena in Cuba at the time of the revolution. And like her daughter, she recognizes her daughter as her tia nena. Um, and like, so it was just like that very basic kind of the, the, the basic world of it. So I think that for me, it's like, it's usually like a person starts, I, I tend to, I think I write for people. So I think usually a person or a character kind of starts talking to me. And that's like kind of how it, it sort of begins for me. I, I think that um, I really admire people who are like super structure and plot oriented because I find I'm at a place in my life for sure where I have gotten, uh, learned a lot about structure. And I think that I appreciate that structure is sort of structure is not plot and, and structures can exist in a lot of different ways, but I'm definitely more of a, a character dialogue writer type of writer. Thank you, Alice. I'm sorry it didn't work out with your headset. What the thing? What the thing? <laughs> Lin, I think Linda, do we have time? Do we have time for another question, guys? We can do one more, uh, and I think okay. this is the last question. Linda, you are unmuted. Okay. Oh, hey, Linda. Hi. hi. Um, I just, you seem like a very positive person. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm really enjoying your sense of humor and just your you in Thank general. You, Linda. I just wanted to know, how do you feel about, I mean, have you always felt comfortable speaking about your work? And um, does did it did it just do you, have you always felt comfortable about speaking about your work, or is it something that you've had to evolve? Because I I tend to find it's difficult for me to actually yeah. put together my thoughts to try to explain my work to people, or you know, totally. I, 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 I yeah no Linda. I, was there more to the question besides that? Oh, I think I, I well, I had another question as well. The other question was, it seems to me like, um, you know, a lot of time and, and what you just said about character being character driven mm -hmm. with your work. Mm -hmm. Do you also think about. Oh, I just lost you for a minute there, Linda. I didn't hear that. In Unfortunately, all Linda, your playwrights, they speak about their work and they a lot of times they talk about it in terms of, you know, the psychological nature of it or the political nature of it. Um, and, and so those kind of bridging those two gaps together of like describing your work and also figuring out what it's, what it, it means and says to mm. some kind of theme. You know, I think like, you know, years ago I took this, directing class and I still think about it but this the professor would always say to us like when you're describing he was talking about directing a play because he was referring to it as directing but I think about it in terms of writing where he would say like think about describing your play like to somebody at a bar like if you're in a bar with your friend and you tell them you know a couple of lines about it what is their response? Because that's going to tell you so much, you know what I mean? And if somebody is like, it's so interesting for me, because like, I've started to get to know, like, what are the plays think people are going to be really excited about if like, just like when I just, if I just say like, 
you know, oh yeah, it's like about these two people who face a loss and then like a planet starts talking to the one person and whatever, you know, like that's a bad description. But I, I think that like, that's actually a really great way. Um, funnily enough, I find like television, working, working a little bit in the television world and going on pitch meetings has like really changed my life as far as all this is concerned because you just kind of have to be able to sort of describe yourself and your project and I actually have, I just actually, one of my consulting clients, who's this really great guy named Chris, was, we talked about this in terms of his website. And like, I actually think for writers, it, we're not always great at talking about our plays. It's hard. We're so deeply involved in them. Like we're not copywriters usually. I mean, not to say that. And even if we are copywriters, we're probably not great necessarily often at doing it about our own work. So I actually did this with my client and I think I've done it with myself. And I think sometimes just like forcing yourself to like bottle down you know what I mean? Like, let's say you're going into a revision of the play. Like you already, cause I think that first draft is sacred and you should just push through and try as hard as you can to get out of your head and just get, lay it all out. But once you've got your next draft is just really like thinking about bottling it up into like a few sentences that you can just even memorize and just have to yourself and not, you know, that you have to feel like you have to like line by line, know it exactly. But just so that way you feel more confident and you're like, oh, okay right, I have this description that sort of is going to help me and be a tool. And that way I don't feel like, you know, I, I feel always uncomfortable when at parties and stuff, people are like, oh, what kind of stuff do you write? Like, tell me about that play. But if you, I find if you have the little like cheat sheet in your head, it it's, can be helpful. Is that helpful, Linda? Good. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you very well at the end, but I'm glad I think I don't know if, I don't know if we're, we're muted. Oh, I can't. Oh, oh I got you. you. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was absolutely, uh, yes. Thank you so much. I, I tend to, it's, it's hard to talk about work when it, you feel like story is just enough, but you know, a lot of times they want you to put so much more to it than just the story itself or the, or the characters. Yeah. And, you know. But and yeah, it, it sometimes can help you. Yeah, and it sometimes can help you. I find like when I'm doing applications and stuff, like it's so, help. it actually, as hard as it is sometimes to get into that headspace, it can actually really help you sometimes when you're going back into the work to understand it better because you're the one who's been trying to sort of encap, you know, and sometimes when you can't actually, but I find personally, if I can't bottle it up, I'm like, oh, something's wrong that I can't just describe this in a couple sentences. Like why, why can't I, it's actually just happened to me recently with this piece I've been developing. I was like, why, when I talk about this, it turns into like an hour long monologue. Like I can't, like I'm trying to figure out how to make it a couple sentences. So it's, it's, it's a struggle for sure. We're all, you know, it takes time. Um, I hear, I saw the, I saw the hands. <laughs> they were Me, there. I think we have to wrap up. Yes. Um, thank you. CQ, this was awesome. Thank you so much for thank you guys so for, much for doing this. Of course, uh, is it okay if people reach out to you via please? Your yes, yes. Website. And I, and I sent the I sent the if you guys want the page, feel free to you can. It's in the it sh the link should be in the chat. Right. And do you want to tell anybody like what you have any upcoming things? I know you have a you were part of the writers room for the Beauty and the Baker. Is that right? Oh. Oh, yeah, the Baker and the Beauty. The Baker is, and the Beauty. Sorry, it's okay. It's totally okay. It's, it's it's totally okay. It's actually on. It's running on ABC. Actually, tonight is the third episode. If you have cable, if not, it's on Hulu on Tuesdays. Um, so cool. that and uh, yeah, and I also run this. If you're looking for this kind of space too, I run this all genre, all queer reading series with a couple of two really amazing guys. And we have been doing it online. We're doing a big, a big fundraiser for Lambda Literary Foundation because they're really struggling right now. Um, and we've got some amazing people that are on board, and in, in, including Carmen Maria Machado's, which is pretty amazing. So, oh my God! Her yeah. Book. So that's I know, Incredible. right? <laughs> May sixth at eight p.m. It's totally free. We asked to, if you can, to try to donate at least ten dollars if you're attending. But it's totally free on Zoom. Uh, bespoke reading series. Awesome. CQ, thank you so much. Thank you. And for everyone, please join us next week for um, Georgina Escobar. There'll be like a little adjustment on the time. Uh, we're starting a little bit later in order to accommodate her teaching schedule. Uh, and also next week, I'm going to announce that we're kind of going to move forward with an expansion of some new writers. And you'll be, you know, I'm still confirming 
uh, folks and dates. So I'll, I'll let people know when those dates will be coming, but we want to keep this going. So continue to, to spread the word and share in CQ. Please come back. And yes, visit. Georgina is amazing also. Just putting that out there. <laughs> yes. Leonard is so, she, he is beside himself. I can see him. <laughs> I love uh, but if you're really into like Latinidad and science fiction and speculative, you know, yes. like playwriting, this is going to be like, it's, it's going to be fun. Yeah. But, uh, Christina, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, Thea, take us out. Thank you all so much. We'll see you next week.